Hey guys, it's Rachel with Bee Hill Dog Training. We've got Khaleesi here who just came for a three week remote collar boarding train. And I uh, just wanted to show you how we're introducing the prong collar. So, you've probably just seen the video of her pulling when I had her just on a basic slip lead. She came in on a harness, pulling just as much on that. I prefer using slip leads so that they can't slip out of it and get loose. But she's typically walked on a harness, she pulls just as bad, if not more, on the harness. So, what I've done is I've just put a prong collar on for the first time. Literally put it on, started the camera. So have not done any work with it at all. She's never worn a prong collar before. And I just want to show you how we're introducing it. And then we're going to go take her on a walk on the prong collar. So all I'm doing right now is I'm going to put very gentle pressure. And as soon as she uh, yields to that pressure and comes towards me, it's going to be released. So basically it's just very gentle pressure. Yes. Good. It's a very... Very, very gentle game of pressure and give. And that way the dog learns, good, when they feel that pressure on the collar, how to give to it. And you'll notice I'm carrying a bumper in my arm. Now, this dog is very mouthy, not in an aggressive way, but she's just constantly trying to play and bite at hands and bite at clothes and my treat pouch. So the bonker is going to put a stop to that behavior. So you'll probably, yep. Now, that's how you use a bonker. Anytime you use a punisher, it's going to be brief, it's going to be free of emotion, and you want to say the word no and then wait a moment or two and deliver your punisher, and then you just move on with your day. It's not going to be a big deal. It uh, should snap the dog's attention. It may even make him nervous at first, which is fine. It's better than what she was doing. If she does it again, she'll get a punisher again. Now, at first, she might object to the collar a little bit because it feels different and because she actually has to listen to it. But it does not mean that the collar is bothering her. It doesn't mean it's hurting her. It's certainly not hurting her. If anything, she's just wondering what the heck this is that's on her that's not allowing her to pull anymore. And we're just going to move on and do everything very gently again like we were just showing you so that she learns it's not a big deal. Good. Now... And you see how effective a towel is. A bonker is nothing more than a wrapped up towel. There's nothing on it. It's soft. Can't hurt anything. But the dog does not like it being thrown at them. That's what makes it so effective. It's a wonderful, aversive train or tool for dogs because they hate it and you can't hurt them with it. Stops behavior very, very quickly. And we'll have other posts about this, but you can't work with a dog effectively, who's in this aroused state of mind. You know, if she was all over the place a few minutes ago, and if I let that continue, I'm not going to be able to work with her effectively and provide her the structure that she needs. So really, if I can just stop the behavior immediately, then we can move on to all the fun stuff. Good. Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. Good girl. No. She's also very mouthy, and you'll notice if I go to pat her, she tries to bite at my hand. Again, she's not being aggressive at all. That's just the way that she's learned to communicate and try to play constantly. We're going to put a stop to that immediately. There we go. Good. Will that make her wary of me? Quite possibly, but she'll get over that real quick. It won't take long. Because she'll learn that I'm not throwing the bonker at her just to throw it at her. She's going to learn that there's certain behaviors that she does that elicits a punishment. And if she doesn't do it, then there's no punishment. Then it gets to be the fun stuff. Let's go. Good. 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 Yes. 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 I'm not worried at all about the flinching at me because, again, she doesn't 100% understand. She understands enough not to do that behavior anymore. Now she's going to learn that as long as she's not acting like that, nothing's going to happen. Everything's going to be great. Good. Yes. And a lot of dogs that come here, the first thing that happens is they're punished. And it's not fun. It's not that we enjoy punishing dogs right off the bat when they get here. But when they're out of control like this, in this amped up state of mind, Again, you just can't really work with a dog like that. So you got to put a stop to it right off the bat. Good girl. But then we're going to be able to actually take walks that are fun for both of us. And you saw in the video before, she was choking herself out on her collar. And that's not okay. 
video. This is just a baseline video showing you what we're starting with. So I just got her on a basic slip lead here. And you can see that she's pulling so hard that she's actually gagging. Having with her is way too much energy and she has a lot of rough play that she insists on engaging in. Um, basically just getting too wound up. And again, you can see how hard she's pulling here. Don't want the dog to be choking herself out. Now a harness like she was on, they're usually not gonna choke on a harness, but it doesn't stop the pulling. And if anything, a harness makes it worse. So um, a harness would stop the, the gagging on the collar, but it's not gonna fix the pulling and it's not gonna fix the frame of mind. And apparently when she crosses paths with other people and dogs, she goes ballistic, she loses her, her mind and gets way over the top excited. Now we're gonna have control of our dog so that we can have nice calm walks where she's not in that amped up state of mind all the time. So again, this is just our intro work. Whenever we start work with a prong collar, this is what we do. You only have to do this one time. You don't have to do this every time you put the prong collar on, but it's just a brief pressure and release game that teaches them how the collar works and what it feels like, how to give to that pressure. And then the collar is going to be that much more meaningful when you apply it to your obedience work. When you use the collar to help teach sit or to help teach down, it's that much easier for them to absorb the commands. Because she doesn't know down yet, so we will use leash pressure on the prong collar to teach her how to do a good down. And if she understands giving to pressure, it's going to make it good, that much easier to teach things. And I will be able to use that much less pressure when I ask her for things. When they don't give to pressure, you end up with this fight. You get a dog that's leaning against you or pulling against you. If you teach them to give to pressure, you can use very little to just communicate to your dog what it is that you're asking for, and then they give it to you. Good. So I'm going to do just a couple more minutes of this, and then we'll take her out on the walk, and I will show you that. Okay, so since the last video, all I've done is I've walked around the training room for about five or ten minutes or so. I uh, did a little more of the pressure and release game and then did some walking with her at my side in a heel. And so now we've come outside and I've literally just walked out here, put the camera on, and we're going to start walking her out here. So again, this is just within the first 10 to 20 minutes of her even wearing a prong collar ever. And um, you're going to see a big difference from what we had beforehand to what we've got now. get too in depth here about how to teach a dog to walk properly on a prong collar and in a heel but I do have other videos on my YouTube channel that show that um, what you will see is you'll see lots and lots of very small corrections um, when they're first learning to walk I mean you, you saw what she was doing before she has spent basically the whole year of her life learning to pull and go all over the place and so now she's gonna have to have constant small corrections that are telling her don't go too far forward don't lag behind, don't go out there, don't sniff the ground. Um, there's lots of don'ts that we have to give her to teach her the do, which is to walk in this little bubble, in this little box, quietly with your head up, not messing with anything else. So at first you'll see a lot of these corrections, and they're not big corrections because she's just learning. She's not being punished, but she is being guided. And we're doing that with leash pressure. They're going to be give and takes. So you'll see a lot of this motion with my leash, with my hand. Um, and that's because I don't want to pull on her and I don't want her pulling on me. The whole purpose of this is to not pull anymore. So we're giving pressure to get her into the area where she should be and then a release to tell her she's in the right spot. And that's how we'll get her walking softly on a leash. Um, so you're going to see that. You may see her object to the collar some. She didn't do that inside at all, but a lot of dogs, when you first put this on them and start walking them properly, they'll object to it, A, because it feels different than what they felt before and they're just unsure, and B, because they're trying to pull and they can't and they want to pull, so they'll tell you about it. Um, if she does object at all, I'm just going to ignore it and continue moving on. If she really gets obnoxious, then we may pull the bonker back out, but you'll notice I'm not even having to hold it anymore because all the nonsense stuff, stuff has stopped. Um, I've got one close by in case she does get wound up, but I don't really think that's going to happen. So again, we're just walking, and at this point, all I'm trying to do is teach her the area to walk in and to not sniff the ground. I'm not going to be overly concerned about her doing things like 
making eye contact. I'm not worried about an auto sit at this point. It's awesome if she gives it to me. I do have her food with me to reward, but she's not really been taking food. Typically when dogs first get here, they don't take food for the first couple of sessions. So she may not take it, but if your dog is taking food, you can use this as a reward for when they're walking in the correct spot or if they go into a sit when you come to a stop. Um, you can use food, but that's why you'll probably see me not give her um, too many opportunities to take food because she wasn't taking me up on it before. Let's go. So you'll see it's a little bit messy right now, but I mean, look at what we started with before. That was really messy. So it's not super clean yet. It'll clean up with time. If you do this consistently, it really does not take long before they're walking quietly, not really paying attention to anything else that's going on out there, and they know what their area is that they're supposed to be in. Not worried about it looking perfect right now. That's just not that big a deal. As long as she's being calm, which she is, and she's learning where the space is that she's allowed to be in, that's all I care about right now. Let's go. You have some people that teach only to heal on one side or the other. That's personal preference for me. Let's go. For me, I like to teach them to heal on both sides just because why not? You know, there may be a time when I want them on the left versus the right or if I'm walking multiple dogs. And even if you always teach a dog to heal on one side versus the other, it's not like you can't put them on the other side. But sometimes if they've always been on the left, they're a little awkward on the right. I'd rather just teach them to do both. Another thing you'll notice that I'm doing is I'm walking very, very slowly, and that's on purpose. I'm deliberately walking slowly because she needs to slow down. I need her to physically slow down, and I need her to mentally slow down. And so I'm doing that by physically slowing down myself, insisting that she physically slows down. A lot of times if we can change physically what they're doing, then mentally that'll change what they're doing. changing our speed back and forth but I don't want to throw too much at her at first so again all I'm doing is walking slowly you'll see too that I will come to a stop and let her self correct and that just means that if I stop and she keeps walking forward that leash gets tight but if you watch my hand I'm not pulling against her I'm actually just anchoring it against my side I'm keeping my hand down at my side so that when she continues walking she corrects herself and then comes back into place One thing you can do if you're working on this with your own dog and you're having a hard time with keeping your hand still because it's important that you keep your hand in one place and that is the area that the dog can walk within so you'll notice I'm not giving her a lot of leash because there's no reason I don't want her to be that far away from me so why would I give her enough leash that allows her to do that so I'm keeping my leash short when she's in the right spot it's loose though even though it's short it's not tight it's soft now you'll see there's lots of moments where it does get tight when I'm having to correct her and bring her back in. But when she's in that bubble, in that box, it's gonna be nice and loose. If you're having a hard time with keeping your leash, your leash the right length and keeping your hand in the right spot, you can also hook your thumb in your pocket. Hook your thumb in your pocket, hold on tight to your leash so that you know it's not changing. You've got your leash the correct length. And then basically she'll self-correct every time she gets out of that bubble. So that's another thing you can do if you're struggling with keeping your hands steady and consistent. Okay, so again.
again, this is just showing you how we're introducing the prong collar. Um, there's a lot of misinformation about prong collars out there. People will tell you that they're abusive and that we use prong collars to intimidate dogs, to bully them into walking nicely on a leash. And I just want to put this to, out there to show you that there's no bullying involved in this. It's all very soft, gentle work. Good. And it makes a huge, huge difference. So she has now been on a prong collar for a grand total of no more than 45 minutes. Um, and that's counting when I put it on and then went to get my camera ready. So, I mean, she's been wearing this for 30, 45 minutes. She's been actually physically working on it for what, 20? And we've got a, a big difference in how she's walking on a leash versus when she came here and what she's been doing on a regular basis. So again, Khaleesi, she, and, and you'll see, she's still a little wary of me, A, because she's brand new. So some of this she was doing before I used the bonker. She was already a little bit wary. She's brand new here. She doesn't know me. Some of this is because I threw a bonker at her and she's kind of like, whoa, you're the bonker lady. And that's fine. I don't mind being the bonker lady. Um, I'd rather that than her jumping all over me and biting me. And again, she'll get over that the more that she sees, especially because I'm not going to have to do that much more. You know, I might have to use it one more time, but it's very effective. And now we get to do all the fun stuff and she gets to start learning everything else that's out there and available to her. And this is how she can eventually be off leash trained. That's what she's here for, to do everything, um, to work up to the point that she can be off leash trained and reliable. And to me, that's worth it to throw a bonker at a dog two or three times, cut the crap, cut the nonsense. Now I get to do all the good stuff. So, um, but again, this is Khaleesi, one year old Husky. She's been here for a couple hours, if that, and mostly she's just spent the time kind of calm down and relaxing in the crate. We've only done about 30 to 45 minutes of work. So make sure you're following the Facebook page, the Instagram, YouTube channel. We'll have lots of updates on her as well as everybody else who's here. Welcome.